This call is now being recorded. Okay, to Alpha, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay, very good. Can you see your my presentation, your screen? Yes. Okay, also, yes. Okay, very good. So, just today, we are going to continue yeah, because there are about two more subtopics in topic 4.2. Okay, so uh, I just want to make it very quick and very short uh, today. Okay, um, before we start, uh, finish the 4.2 topic, let's remember back what we already learned, okay, in our previous um, lesson in 4.2, okay. Again, uh, 4.2, you learn about the human reproductive system, okay. You will learn the details on our first system in human um, in form one. Yeah? In form one, you learn the uh, more detail about the system. We call it a human reproductive system. Okay, what you're going to learn, okay, the previous lesson, again, you must able to understand what is the meaning of reproduction. And then the second one is you must identify the parts and function of male reproductive system and also the female reproductive system. Okay. If you, uh, I think you already finished because I asked you to try to draw uh, and label and also write the function of male and female reproductive system. Make sure you understand, make sure you're able to recognize, to able to locate and identify both male and female reproductive system okay i just ask you to to you know to choose whether you want to draw uh, either the front view or the side view of the both um, reproductive system okay i hope you already finished and some of you already give me the screenshot or the the picture of your work very good well done good work all right um and then um we also learn about the changes, okay, the changes that occur during the puberty in both male and female, okay. Just to remind you that puberty happened both in male and female, and then it is the sign, right, it is the sign that you are able to reproduce meaning that your reproductive organ is functioning and then you're able to reproduce, meaning that for male, you're able to produce sperm and then for female, you are able to, to produce ovum. So this is what we call a puberty. And then please remember, uh, the normal age when you start puberty uh, for boys and girls is a bit different, a bit different, eh? Because normally for boys, you going undergo puberty when you are at 14 to 17 years old. But 17 years old is quite old, but it is considered normal. And then for female, okay, you will undergo your puberty will start from 10 to 12 years old. Okay? And then of course, normally it is like this. The female or the girl will uh, mature faster uh, mature uh, first than boy and then make sure you also understand what are the changes on your physical body your physical appearance such as your voice uh, your body and then your uh, of, uh, also your reproductive organ okay make sure you remember this right so for today we just want to continue the topic for today the comparison between the male and female gametes okay we call it gametes okay what is the another word for gametes class can you um tell me what is the other word for gametes anybody gametes or we call it what type of cell anybody What cell? Uh, 
Anybody? Class? Hello? You want to make it quick? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, gametes are N, or what we call it, what type of cell? Re? Reproductive. Reproductive. Yes, reproductive cell. Or we call it gamete. Okay, reproductive cell, or we call it gamete. Okay. In both male and female, we also call it gametes. Okay, but the name for male gametes, we call it sperm. And then the name for the female gametes, we call it ovum. Okay, but also please remember uh, which are the parts in male reproductive system that produce sperm in testes. Eh? Remember, parts of male reproductive system that produce the sperm, we call it testes. And then for the female reproductive system the parts that make the uh, ovum is in ova ovary okay please remember that right so today we just want to um, try to compare and contrast huh? what are the what we call the similarity and the difference between these two reproductive cells okay or gametes okay so the next one, you must be able to identify the shape and then the what we call the name and the parts of each gamete. Eh? We start from the male gamete, that is sperm. Okay, this is the sperm. But actually, eh, actually the picture here is not according to the size. Eh? Make sure, eh? because if you uh, look at the picture right now, on your left is the sperm and then on your right is the ovum, right? Actually, ovum is much, much bigger than sperm. So it is not accurate. Eh? It is not the same picture at the same time. Okay? Please remember that. It is a different size, actually. Eh? Okay. But in sperm first, eh, in, the, in the male gamete, there are nucleus. There are a parts we call it head. And then middle piece. And there is a tail. You just, just remember that. All right. Okay? And then nucleus, where the information, your genetic information, for example, the color of your skin, the type of your hair, the color of your eyes, eh? and then um, the, the DNA, the contain the DNA or the genetic information about yourself is contained in the nucleus of the sperm eh? at the head here. Inside the head, we have nucleus. Nucleus will keep all your genetic information about yourself inside the sperm. Okay, your height, for example, eh? your your face shape, your type of hair, what else? Eh? The skin color, the hair color, eh? everything genetic. What we call it a variation or the genetic information of you will start in the nucleus of the gamete, right? So for the ovum, we have gel layer nucleus cytoplasm and cell membrane are uh, just four four parts of ovum and then also if you see here the nucleus here also will keep the genetic information from the from the women or from the girls okay they are what we call inside the nucleus they are the dna eh? dna that stored all the genetic information about the girl we put uh, the the information we store inside the nucleus Okay, if you see both cell, if you see both gamete, sperm and ovum has nucleus. Okay, sperm also has nucleus and then ovum also have nucleus. Okay, it is, it is the place where the, all the genetic information about the people or the, the person stored inside, right? So before I forgot, uh, there is another thing, is the smallest cell in the male body eh? sperm is the smallest cell in the male body and shaped like a tadpole you know what is tadpole eh? before the frog eh? the what we call the the off before the frog eh? uh, become a dog it will become tadpole first eh? and then what is the ovum ovum is the largest cell in the female body opposite eh? opposite opposite size yeah Sperm is the smallest cell in the male body, and then the ovum is the largest cell on the female body here. So this is the the what we call the actual um, 
shape of the sperm and ovum, but not the actual, but not the actual size. Yeah? Actually, ovum is much, much, much bigger than sperm. Uh, later, I will show you the picture, right? So, where is the picture? Okay. Fertilization image. Okay. And this is the example, the real, what we call the real image of ovum and sperm. Okay. Sperm is actually much, much bigger than sperm. Right, I see. So this is the real image of what we call the sperm and ovum, both male and female gametes. Right? Okay. Right. Okay. I will continue. The head of the sperm contain nucleus that carries genetic and hereditary information. Huh? Genetic information and hereditary information, meaning that all the characteristics that you have, if you still remember the, the sample of characteristics you have, huh? it all, it's all on carry or stored in the nucleus of the sperm to be transferred to the offspring. Okay, number one, function of nucleus. And then the tail enable the sperm to move or to swim in the semen inside the vagina. Okay, what is semen? Semen and sperm are two different things. Yeah, semen is the liquid state of sperm. Huh? When you, when the, uh, well, uh, when boys or when the uh, males ejaculate, semen is the liquid form, and inside the semen we have. Inside the semen, we have um, sperm, okay? Semen usually in uh, white in color, lah. okay? For boys, yeah? for boys, semen is usually white in color and very sticky, very sticky substance that we will ejaculate uh, in order to, 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 to channel the sperm into the woman. Uh, that is the condition of semen, okay? The color of it, just a whitish color and a, a bit sticky, right? So, I continue. The tail enable the sperm to move or swim in the semen inside the vagina, uterus and fallopian tube of the female reproductive system. And then, next one, the normal, the, the, the normal number of sperm released is about 60 million per cubic centimeter. So, this is how many, how much the number or the quantity of sperm Perm ejaculate or release from the male body per cubic centimeter. A cubic centimeter is what? Cubic centimeter is one centimeter times one centimeter, the area. Okay? One centimeter by one centimeter area. Okay? For example, right here. Uh, one centimeter times one centimeter. So, we have one centimeter cubic centimeter so how many sperm inside this area is about 60 million per cubic centimeter 60 million sperm yeah the, it is a lot of sperm actually right because the sperm is very small and um it need to reach ovum it need to reach the ovum so the quantity of sperm is about 60 million per cubic centimeter and then for some of the male yeah, Maybe some of the um, male will produce more and maybe will produce less. Okay? Never mind. Huh? After this, we will go into fertilization process. And then when, uh, when we learn about the fertilization process, you will be uh, know more about how the fertilization process between sperm and ovum happens. Yeah? Okay. How about ovum? Ovum. The characteristic of ovum is spherical in shape, about 0 0.1, 0 0.1 millimeter. So we can say that ovum is the single cell that is the biggest cell in human body. Okay. If the question asks you, if the people ask you, what are the biggest cell in our body? You can answer it, ovum. Yeah? 
gamete, eh? female gamete or ovum is the biggest cell in our body. You still remember eh? the what we call um, the 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 size of the ovum. If you compare with the sperm, ovum is much much bigger eh? compared to the to the sperm, All right? And then how many quantity? Uh, before that, ovum also contain nuclei nucleus that contain genetic and heredit hereditary information. Eh? Hereditary information that uh, the to be transferred to the offspring, and then the ovum is not able to move for itself. Uh, this is the characteristic you must understand. It cannot move by itself because it's just the shape of the spherical. Inside the inside the fallopian tube, eh, inside the uterus of the female, the ovum just floating around. Yeah, according to the to the fluid eh, inside the inside the woman, and then a normal woman usually produce one ovum per month only. Okay, one ovum per month. So if you can conclude the comparison between the ovum and the sperm, what are the similarity? The similarity carries genetic information and then it is a it is an it is a reproductive cell okay these are the similarity huh? sperm carry the information from the male and then the ovum will carry the information from the female and then we have, they fertilize when they fertilize together and then this genetic information will uh, mix or add up together that's why you can see like i said earlier that i said uh, on our previous topic Huh? The son maybe got the eye from the mother, got the nose from their father. Huh? The color of the eye may they may get from their father, huh? and then the shape of the ear and then the shape of the face maybe they get it from their mother. So this is what we call the genetic variation or the genetic information that will be shared together when the sperm and ovum fertilize or fuse together in a process that we call fertilize fertilization. So this is other. This is the similarity. So what is the difference? Sperm able to move, ovum cannot move. Sperm produced by testes, ovum produced by ovary. Sperm is the male gamete, ovum is the female gamete. And then sperm, smaller cell in the body, ovum is the largest cell in the body. Make sure you understand these two very important cell in reproduction uh, in, in in reproduction we call it reproductive cell or we call it gametes uh, gametes uh. can you understand the 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 whole situation here the whole um topic can you understand it yeah okay very good right so we finish 4.2 like i said earlier i just want to finish 4.2 topic and then um, I think I want to show you some video lah, eh, about the the fertilization, right? Make sure you can um, before I end the class for today because I want to I want to uh, I want to make the class today very short lah, because I have I need to uh, got a meeting after this and then I have work to do. So make sure you can see my presentation video. Okay, I try to play it, play it first. Make sure you can hear the voice, the the sound. Fertilization oh. is the epic story of a single sperm. Can you hear the sound? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I will repeat it again from the beginning, right? Fertilization is the epic story of a single sperm facing incredible odds to unite with an egg and form a new human life. It is the story of all of us. During sexual intercourse, about 300 million sperm enter the vagina. Soon afterward, millions of them will either flow out of the vagina or die in its acidic environment. However, many survive because of the protective elements provided in the fluid surrounding them. Next, the sperm must pass through the cervix, opening into the uterus. Usually, it remains tightly closed, but here the cervix is open for a few days while the woman ovulates. The sperm swim through the cervical mucus, 
which is thinned to a more watery consistency for easier passage. Once inside the cervix, the sperm continues swimming toward the uterus, though millions will die trying to make it through the mucus. Some sperm remain behind, caught in the folds of the cervix, but they may later continue the journey as a backup to the first group. Inside the uterus, muscular uterine contractions assist the sperm on their journey toward the egg. However, resident cells from the woman's immune system mistaking the sperm for foreign invaders destroy thousands more. Next, half the sperm head for the empty fallopian tube, while the other half swim toward the tube containing the unfertilized egg. Now, only a few thousand remain. Inside the fallopian tube, tiny cilia push the egg toward the uterus. To continue, the sperm must surge against this motion to reach the egg. Some sperm get trapped in the cilia and die. During this part of the journey, chemicals in the reproductive tract cause the membranes covering the heads of the sperm to change. As a result, the sperm become hyperactive, swimming harder and faster toward their destination. At long last, the sperm reach the egg. Only a few dozen of the original 300 million sperm remain. The egg is covered with a layer of cells called the corona radiata. The sperm must push through this layer to reach the outer layer of the egg, the zona pellucida. When sperm reach the zona pellucida, they attach to specialized sperm receptors on the surface, which triggers their acrosomes to release digestive enzymes, enabling the sperm to burrow into the layer. Inside the zona pellucida is a narrow, fluid-filled space just outside the egg cell membrane. The first sperm to make contact will fertilize the egg. After a perilous journey and against incredible odds, a single sperm attaches to the egg cell membrane. Within a few minutes, the outer membranes fuse and the egg pulls the sperm inside. This event causes changes in the egg membrane that prevent other sperm from attaching to it. Next, the egg releases chemicals that push other sperm away from the egg and create an impenetrable fertilization membrane. As the reaction spreads outward, the zona pellucida hardens, trapping any sperm unlucky enough to be caught inside. Outside the egg, sperm are no longer able to attach to the zona pellucida. Meanwhile, inside the egg, the tightly packed male genetic material spreads out. A new membrane forms around the genetic material, creating the male pronucleus. Inside, the genetic material reforms into 23 chromosomes. The female genetic material, awakened by the fusion of the sperm with the egg, finishes dividing, resulting in the female pronucleus, which also contains 23 chromosomes. As the male and female pronuclei form, spiderweb-like threads, called microtubules, pull them toward each other. The two sets of chromosomes join together, completing the process of fertilization. At this moment, a unique genetic code arises, instantly determining gender, hair color, eye color, and hundreds of other characteristics. This new single cell, the zygote, is the beginning of a new human being. And now the cilia and the fallopian tube gently sweep the zygote toward the uterus, where he or she will implant in the rich uterine lining, growing and maturing for the next nine months until ready for birth. Okay, so that is the uh, video lah on how fertilization happen. Okay. So maybe you can uh, you can watch others video related to the topic today, but you uh, please search uh, the keyword line fertilization 
uh, video uh, on the YouTube, you can see the the others video, yeah. Maybe the real one and then all the animation, animated uh, one. Okay. So I think I will end here. Now it's one in uh, one p.m. So I think I will end the class here. We already finished four point two, and then um, when is our next class? I think our next class is on um, science. Oh, after the school holiday, lah. Right. Okay. So uh, in um, you just wait, lah. Maybe there is a new timetable, lah, yeah, class. Uh, maybe there is a new timetable. So you just wait for the further information. So um, you will be all back to school in 5th of April. So I would love to welcome you to the school later. Lah, yeah? Very, very looking forward for you to come to the school and then to meet your, your class teacher and other teachers face to face. Lah. But still, <laughs> what we call uh, still in a, in a distance. Lah, yeah? Because we want to, we want to um, follow the SOP. Okay, wear the mask and then social distance and whatever. But never mind. So for the next topic, hopefully we will meet you, okay, after the school holiday, starting on Monday on 5th of the April, right? So make sure you're ready uh, also uh, to come to the school. And then um, for the exercise for today, I will give the exercise on the telegram, yeah? Is it okay? So can we end the class here? Yeah? Yes. Yes. Okay, never mind. We end the class here. Uh, the exercise will give you on the Telegram group, okay? So thank you for your cooperation. Thank you for your, for your what we call participation, okay? Since the first day of year 2021, since 20 of January, I think, we do the PDPR. Uh, we do the online classes. Uh, it is very tiring, okay? And that is very, very what we call challenging for you. To, not for you only, but for for us also, yeah, for me, the teachers also to, to to you know to do the online class, and then hopefully after the school holiday next week, okay, after the school holiday week, we will meet again, and then we try to do the the practical side of the science, yeah, that I think we have many practical that I skip during the during the online classes, that hopefully that we can also finish all the practical side. Of the science huh? when you come when you all come back to the school okay so um, so we end the class right now um, thank you for your cooperation so you can leave the class now bye bye you have any question you can ask me on the telegram telegram group okay okay class you can leave the class now bye bye thank you sir thank you sir see you after the school holiday